discussion of the definitive documentation that goes into an M&A or a PE transaction. This particular video, we'll talk about the operative section or the exchange part of this agreement. We'll also talk about the conditions preceded, right? So, straight off the bat, it's very helpful to have a clause talking about the shareholding pattern of the company, right? Sort of a before and after description of what the shareholding pattern is going to look like. Now, in the document that has already been provided to you, you'll notice that uh, part A and part B of Schedule 3 are presently blank, but that as and when, uh, you know, the transaction actually takes place, it's helpful to put in a before and after view of the shareholding pattern of the company, just so that everybody's on the same page as to who holds how many shares and what percentage of shares, right? Now, let's take a look at the exchange part. We've been talking about the fact that this transaction is actually, or this agreement actually covers two separate transactions. The first transaction is where the investor hereby agrees to subscribe to the Series A securities in consideration for which the investor shall pay the subscription, the subscription amount of the company. Let me just delete this. Great. As a subscription amount to this company. Secondly, the investor also agrees to purchase um, and uh, purchase the sale shares in consideration for which the investor will pay the sale amount. So the sale amount plus the subscription amount is what the investor is paying to the company and promoters um, and it is receiving the Series A securities and the sale shares. Um, Series A securities from the company and the sale shares from the promoters. Remember that this is a subscription plus a purchase agreement, right? So, there are two separate transactions that are taking place. In terms of money being shifted between people, again, just so that everybody is on, on the same page, part of the money is going to the company as part of the investment, part of the money is going to the promoters as part of the sale purchase agreement, right? However, let's be very clear on this, that this agreement, right, sets up a contractual obligation against the investor, the company and the promoters, right? It's a contractual obligation to do what? To transfer shares or issue shares and to transfer money, right? It, the money or the shares have not been transferred or issued yet, right? So this obligation of the investor is subject to the fulfillment of a number of conditions and the delivery and execution of certain items which together are referred to as conditions precedent right all of these items that we will be going through must be successfully completed or delivered to the investor unless specifically waived in writing right what are these conditions precedent completion of financial business and legal due diligence of the company by the investor and a resolution or a curing of all the issues raised by the investor and its advisors right now because the company is issuing fresh shares the company may have to increase its authorized share capital if you recall we cannot have paid up share capital in excess of the authorized share capital of the company to include the issuance and allotment of these new shares to the investor right third the company and promoters should have received all necessary authorizations, which include resolutions by the board, um, resolutions by the company in terms of special resolutions, and all such other documents that may be necessary, right? Because this investor is a foreign one, and this is not really required for a domestic investor, um, a valuation certificate from a chartered accountant will be required in, in terms of the applicable pricing guidelines issued by RBI right a confirmation that all of these transaction documents shall have been executed by each of the parties and there is no default that has occurred in any of these transaction documents no event shall have occurred to be continuing uh, or be continuing which would reasonably be expected to have a material adverse effect now i'd like to take a moment to figure out what this material adverse effect is now i'm gonna quickly scroll up and take a look at the uh, definition for material adverse effect. This is any change or effect that would have 
a materially adverse financial impact to the business, operations, assets, condition or operating results of the companies or the ability of the parties to complete or consummate the transactions contemplated in this agreement or the validity, legality or enforceability of the rights or remedies of the investor under these transaction documents. So effectively, a material adverse effect is anything that could happen that could possibly jeopardize either the transaction or the position of the investor under this agreement. Right? All right. There should not have been any proceeding, judgment, decree or injunction um, which involves a challenge um, to this transa these transaction documents or seeks to impose conditions upon the ownership or operations of the company or um, affects the ability of the investor to invest in the company. So effectively that the investment by the investor in this company shall be valid under law. Now subject to the disclosure schedule and we'll talk more about the disclosure schedule when we come to representations and warranties. Um, that all of the all of the warranties of the company and the promoters are true and accurate as of the effective date as well as the closing date. Now the effective date and closing date are two separate dates, right? We'll talk about that when we talk about closing, right? Parties shall have agreed on the amendments required to be made to the charter documents, otherwise known as the Articles of Association, such that the provisions of the entrenchment of these rights, so such that investor protection rights within the, um, the Articles of Association shall be in accordance with the Companies Act and that the promoter shall take actions as may be required to amend the, um, the Articles of Association um, as required under the shareholders agreement. Now, you may recall that under VB Rangaraj, the Supreme Court was of the opinion that any rights and obligations given to shareholders will not be enforceable unless they are also reflected in the Articles of Association. This condition um, requires, contractually requires the company and the promoters to carry out to carry out suitable amendments in the Articles of Association giving share the investor the rights that have been discussed in the transaction documents right what these rights are in terms of the transaction documents we take a look at during the share during our, our discussion on the shareholders agreement right um, just to remind you guys this share subscription and share purchase agreement kicks into force the moment it is executed and it continues to be in force until this transaction has been closed. What do we mean by closure of a transaction? Well, simply put, when the shares have exchanged hands, when the shares have been issued and money has exchanged hands, money flowing, going from the investor to the company or money going from the investor to the promoters, at that point of time, we say that this, uh, this transaction has been closed. At that moment, the investor is now a shareholder and the shareholding agreement comes into force. Right? Of course, there are plenty more rights and obligations between the company and the promoter and the shareholder and the and the investor under the shareholders agreement, which we'll come to when we'll come to it. Right? The company may have certain key employees or key managerial employees, as it may be called sometimes. And now, and the investor may be investing in this company because it has certain key managerial or key employees. The position of the company vis-a-vis -vis these employees must be protected. And it is entirely possible that one of the reasons why the investor is investing in the company is because it has certain key employees who, if they were to leave the company, the company might be, might be facing some kind of a loss or might be in jeopardy. In which case, the investor may require definitive employment agreements with the key employees in form and substance acceptable to the investor and shall deliver certified true copies of the executed versions of the employment agreement to the investor. So the investor needs to know that these employees are going to remain part of the company from here on end and if they want to, if you, if they want to remove themselves from the company, then there, is, there are adequate checks and balances in place, right? Um, I'm going to skip this, this next one because this refers to a specific organization which unfortunately had not been removed from this redacted version um, because the investor in question over here is a US based investor or has some ties to the US um, 
they uh, the company must execute a form saying that we do not engage in any corrupt practices so, so the fcpa uh, refers to the foreign corrupt practices act and a legislature in the um, in the united states which has certain penalties or which can have extra ju- judicial penalties if a us investor or a us citizen is found engaging in corrupt practices outside of the united states um, the the jurisdiction of the us right um then the company and promoters having provided letters and forms acceptable to the investor certifying the paid up share capital of the company prior to the closing certifying the characteristics of these securities or what are the rights and obligations within the securities and enclosing a board resolution confirming the allotment of securities contingent upon the receipt of the subscription amount so effectively a letter an allotment letter to the investor by the company and promoters saying that we will allot these um these shares to you subject to us receiving the subscription amount right parties shall have prepared drafts of the form fctrs and all supporting documents now this was a form that was required to be filled out um in case of a transfer of shares to a foreign entity which is not really required for a domestic uh, a domestic investor right um promoter shall have deposited the share certificates duly executed and stamped transfer forms in respect of the sale shares now these are shares that the promoters are selling to the investor and shall have sent scanned copies of such certificates to the investor via email along with any kyc documents as may be required finally the company will have passed resolutions in accordance with its articles in order to affect the split of any share certificates as may be required to enable the sale and transfer of the share sales contemplated therein now these are generic conditions preceded right which m- may be found in any and all um such transaction documents right now depending upon the commercials which as agreed between parties you may need to add more conditions preceded you may need to remove certain of certain conditions preceded right but by and large these are the typical conditions preceded that are seen in a vast majority of m and a and p transactions you may also have additional conditions based on the due diligence of the company right so if the company is missing a a, a license or a permit then you may need to add a condition precedent saying that the company shall have received a license or a permit saying so and so and shall deliver a scanned certified true copy of that license or permit to this particular investor or that a particular director who has been accused of malpractice or has been accused of moral turpitude should be removed and a replacement director having been appointed to the board or um let's say certain title to certain land has not been has not been obtained company to provide um the land or title documents in a certified manner to the investor right so these are all conditions coming out of the due diligence now once these conditions precedent have been completed and they must be completed by something called the long stop date now let's take a look at what is this long stop date now the company the promoters and the investor have entered into this agreement uh, but and we've seen how this agreement has created a contractual obligation on part of the investors company and promoters to exchange shares and money but the conditions precedent must be completed or must be satisfied within a an outer limit right that outer limit is the long stop date now this again will depend upon the transaction the long stop date shall mean the date by which all condition precedents have to be com- conditions precedent have to be completed or such later date as may be specified by the investor in writing now there there are variations of all of these of course it could be specified by the investor it could be as mutually agreed as well basically the long stop date is a is the maximum outer date by which the conditions precedent have to be completed if conditions precedent are not completed by the long stop date then either the investor can call off the deal or may waive the um the requirement of certain conditions precedent which have not been completed or in this in this case as we are seeing 
um, the investor may specify a later date. So the long stop date can be amended. The reason for having this long stop date is that there's, it lends a certain amount of certainty to the transaction that you know for a fact as the investor that this transaction should be completed by so and so date. It also lends us an element of certainty to the company and the promoters as well that if we are unable to complete the con or satisfy the conditions precedent by so and so date then uh, we will no longer be subject to this agreement and that we should look for an investor somewhere else. Each of the company and promoter shall take all steps necessary to prom promptly and expeditiously, expeditiously fulfill the conditions precedent and shall promptly inform the Series A investors of all actions and steps taken on an ongoing basis. Right, So that's fairly simple, it, it's self-explanatory and um, um, you know the company and the promoter basically have to do everything in their power to ensure that the conditions precedent are being fulfilled. Within five business days of the fulfillment or a waiver in writing by the investor of all the conditions preceding required to be fulfilled. So within five business days of the fulfillment or satisfaction of all the conditions preceding, the company shall provide a written confirmation of the same. So it shall provide a certificate to the investor in the form attached and it doesn't really matter what the form is. It's basically saying that we have completed all conditions, all conditions preceding. To the investor, if any of the conditions precedent is not fulfilled or is not waived in writing by the long stop date, then the Series A investor shall have the right but not the obligation to terminate this agreement by written notice. And upon such issuance of this, of this written notice, this agreement shall ipso facto cease to exist and none of the party shall have any claim against the other for costs. Right. So effectively, sub, sub clause C tells us that what should happen if you should complete or satisfy all your conditions precedent. If you fail to do so and it has not been waived, then the Series A investor shall have the right to uh, terminate this agreement by written notice. However, there's a problem with this clause and, I've, and I'd like to point this out right now. What happens if the conditions precedent have not been fulfilled? have not been waived in writing and the Series A investor has not terminated the agreement either. Where do we stand there? Is the, is the, termination, is the agreement terminated automatically or is the, is the long stop date automatically um, you know, um, postponed or, or situated to a later date? Because both the postponement of the long stop date as we've seen in the in the definitions clause as well as the um, termination of this agreement both are affected by a written notice by the investor to the company and the promoters. So this is a grey area that has not been discussed within this clause. right? All right, uh, we're going to go on to closing in the next video. So far, we've been talking about conditions precedent. Now, conditions precedent are basically uh, j just to go over, uh, you know, whatever we talked about in this in this video. Conditions precedent are steps that the company and promoters must take in order to move towards closing. These are steps that the company and promoter must undertake so that they receive the money and the investor receives the shares. Now. There will be some occasions where the investor may have to partake in certain conditions precedent. Again, this is determined by the diligence. This is determined on a case to case basis. Once the conditions precedent have been fulfilled, we can then move towards closing, which will be the subject of our next video.